Today's topic is Q and Stack, and uh, it's a data structure. Um, so let's start it. Overall, we will uh, see what the data structure is, where we can store their uh, variables in the programming language as in Python, and uh, especially what's the Q and Stack. Uh, and we will also um, see their built-in structure in Python, and we will implement uh, their Q and Stack um, process and also we will continue to work on with their traversing uh, process as in BFS and DFS which is uh, also most of their same as in the Q and stack uh, word so later we can practice it uh, after the presentation um, yeah overall we can uh, have a data structures as in different type, especially in the Python. It's a numeric sequence type. Uh, as you can see here, the mapping or dictionary and any, any set types and bo Boolean type variables. But what the exactly, um, if we have some array or list in a, just usual list and you want to get access to any uh, variables in that list, any item, um, especially, um, their Q and stack means here that we will work with each items of this uh, array in order, in right order. So we will work on with their beginning and ending parts of their uh, of this list. But here in the Python, we have several structures uh, where we uh, want to update or modify any uh, array or list. It will take linear time, it's not constant time, it's lo longer. So that's why we already have in the Python, the building structures as in collection the queue or queue, which we can import as in the library also, where uh, all the modification and changes in the list will be in the constant time. That's why later we will continue to work on with the collection the queue in Python. So um, especially, uh, if you can imagine how we can get access to any item in their array, we can think about that like order. So uh, here we can um, uh, be familiar with the first in first out things, uh, which means that uh, if you can see this list, uh, first element here will be just one as in here. And uh, in the queue, we will work with this element when we want to get or get reach that element. But we can add it just uh, as in the last element and it's it called in queue. And the, by the queuing, we uh, just um, delete and get this element from the beginning part. And uh, in the ending part, it will be just appending um, things. So uh, in the queue, uh, as by the meaning of this word, we're just working on with all elements in the order uh, by getting the first element, which which came first. So, uh, and here we can implement it by two ways. Uh, as I said and mentioned before, we have library as in queue, which we can import and uh, uh, just do some uh, functionalities with this, um, uh, with this type of the functionalities. So by adding their elements to the queue, we can use put and uh, by deleting it, we can uh, use the get uh, functions. So uh, overall, we can also set up the maximum size uh, chain for the emptiness and uh, uh, just uh, again to see their uh, queue size overall. Uh, so uh, the uh, their next uh, library for uh, implementing their queue will be their the queue things, which is a little bit uh, different uh, rather than just queue. However, it's also similar to uh, implement. We just can um, import their DQ functionalities and uh, append or add it uh, the elements to the end of their list and the later just uh, delete it as in like pop left, which is the leftmost or first element in the list. So it's all will be in their constant time. Uh, uh, also, we have uh, like um, extra or additional functionalities in the DQ, which will be copying, extending, removing, reversing. But uh, especially in the queue, we need most of their just two uh, main of them as an append and the pop left. So uh, just be uh, pay attention to the pop left. However, later we will uh, implement this DQ in the stack. So it will be the same library and we'll work on with it. Uh, yeah, so the next uh, data structure is stack here when we just work on with all the elements uh, in, in different order, when we just 
do these things last in first out. So we, uh, if you want to get rich, any elements will just get from the end of this list and added the next one again to the end of this list. So it will be popping and pushing as uh, in the in other um, program, programming languages, but in the Python, we can again append or pop these things. Uh, the first implementation will be the same as in like uh, queue uh, library, but here's is live for queue uh, where you can implement it by the functionalities as in putting um, and the getting again. So it's just pretty same, but their name of this library is different uh, where you can implement the stack. So it will be also in the constant time we have pretty the same functionalities here. And the second version of implementing uh, queue uh, stack with the queue. So it's the same um, as I sh uh, showed before, as in the, the queue things, but uh, we just doing their uh, one line is just a different. Uh, it's not pop left, it's just pop. It means that we'll get reached the elements from the end of the list by popping this item. So we can pop it and again, append or add it or put it to the end of the list. So that's a um, basic um, things of stack and queue. And uh, uh, here's, uh, we can do some little practice or if you already solve these uh, problems, we can continue to work on and maybe you can uh, try to think uh, now how we can implement it or how exactly we use uh, stack or queue for this problem. Um, and uh, yeah, if it's too easy, we can continue. It's, so let me uh, explain it there, the given problem. Uh, it's called uh, in the lead code, uh, uh, as in moving average from data stream. And uh, by moving average, we can set up this maximum size of this list and we can add the next numbers uh, by uh, using the next. So the next number here will be one, 10, and then three and five. So uh, by working on with this element, we should calculate the average uh, of that data. So by seeing their um, data in the size of three, we can work on for uh, uh, in the beginning beginning with the first number and uh, the number as in 10. So their average between one and 10 will be here five and five and the average between one 10 and three will be three and uh, four and six. But later when we want to add the uh, fourth element, we should know that there we, we just have the fixed sizes in three. That's why we should avoid the first element. However, it's just, we don't need it anymore. The average should be calculated from these numbers as in 10, three and five. So um, if I already mentioned about it, um, it's the, Q structure, and uh, it means that uh, when their size is already uh, bigger than uh, our fixed number, we should delete the first element uh, by their functionalities as in pop left. Um, so that's that's the solution of this problem. And um, is it is it uh, <laughs> um, pretty uh, understandable? Um, yeah, and also uh, if you, yeah. So the next question here will be valid parentheses, where we should just uh, see is it in the valid order all the parentheses, and as we can see in the first example, it will be all true or correct, and in the second example, it will be false. However, the orders is is not correct. So that's why we. Um, uh, if uh, we are, we'll think about there as in the solution by using Q or stack, we, uh, there, there, the solution will be pretty obvious. But in other cases, if you can think about the solutions uh, by solving this problem will be a little bit um, uh, complicated. So uh, here, if you can imagine, uh, once we get the opening parenthesis, we can think about how we where where we can close it, or do, do we have any closed parenthesis for this pair? And if it's uh, if uh, we can close this uh, pair of parenthesis, we can be sure that oh, it's correct for this uh, first piece of um, string. So as in the next one, we can also continue to work on with all the parenthesis. Um, we can uh, then later continue to work on with this uh, in this example, uh, just to be sure, maybe code it. But yeah, so in the in the lead code, it will be their uh, 12th uh, problem. Uh, uh, later, we can also focus on, on this problem, but let me uh, explain a little bit uh, the other parts of the queue and stack here. So, um, 
uh, Q uh, and the what's there? Q, how can Q work in the traversing, as in like tree, graph? However, it's very helpful to implement. Oh. All right, uh, so, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, I was wondering, uh, were you planning to solve the parentheses problem? Oh, sorry for my cat. Uh -huh. <laughs> the yeah. parentheses problem in breakout rooms, or maybe we sure. can, uh, like all of us open lead code and solve it all together uh, and discuss it. Uh, so everyone understands how stacks work and what are the use for? Um. Uh, I don't know. It's I think uh, up to us. If uh, everyone wants to try to implement it first, we can do it and later uh, continue to work on with the traversing things. Um, yeah. So, what what's the better way? Let's uh, may I ask you to open a lead code and sure. this problem. It's pretty simple and basically we all can uh, mop do mop programming and basically tell you what to type. So you're going to be just typing. And we are going to tell you what to type. How yeah, that that's, that's going to be cool. Yeah, let's try to do it. Um, so let me open my lead code. Um, it was a valid parenthesis, right? Yeah. Just quick. OK. While it's opening, I highly recommend to everyone uh, the daily challenge. Uh, if you want to get up to speed with some competitive programming, but don't have a lot of time to dedicate, daily challenge is a good option. Yeah, so I just cleaned it up. Uh, here's the problem statement. It means that we can work on with the three characters, as in like uh, their simple parentheses, curly parentheses, and like this rectangle type of the. I'm not sure how exactly to call it. So, but overall, right, uh, we are just given the string uh, which contains this uh, this type of the parentheses, and we have to just uh, return true or false statement. Is it correct or in the in, in, is it in the correct order or not? Um, so uh, what do you think? Uh, what structure will be uh, better for here? How we can solve it? Should we, how we can track all this process and be sure that we have the true uh, order of the parenthesis? I think we need to create first like object. I mean like object in JavaScript. I'm not sure how, to, how it's called in Python. I mean like key value structure, like yeah. with the uh, key as a open bracket and the uh, value as a like close and bracket. Uh, yeah, okay. And then <laughs> uh like dictionary, right? When we yeah. uh will work on with all the elements which has own pairs. So are you saying that the key value will be open or close parenthesis? Mm. I'm not too sure it's probably it's probably better to use uh, close and uh, parentheses. Okay, so it means that once we meet the close parentheses, we can check this out. Is it has uh, the like open pair, right? So in that case, we can continue to work on with that uh, thing. So yeah, I think it should work. Um, here's the the next pair. Okay, and then. Uh, we just have uh, all the string lengths. Uh, definitely, I think we can iterate all the characters or parentheses in the string. And uh, we can check this out. Is it open or closed, right? So if this parenthesis yes. equals to something, right? So uh, how uh, we can track this out? If, uh, let's say that if we see that the, uh, this parenthesis is already in the dictionary, maybe we should check this out to the opening closing things. And later, what? what we can say that here. Mm. I think we shall start with the definition of a valid string in this case is, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for every, the definition would be that for every open parenthesis, there is a closing parenthesis for yeah. every closing parenthesis, there is an opening parenthesis. Okay. And also we have to be mindful of the order. Right. Uh, because. For example, yeah, here, like, right? Like example four, yeah. exactly. Yes. We so do have, have already. Of the order. 
all the pairs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we cannot return true in this uh, example. But uh, there are other examples should work fine and we should say that, oh, it's, it's totally correct. So it means that once we open the parenthesis, we cannot do anything. Maybe we just, we just continue, we should continue to work on with this element. Uh, let's say that we open the parenthesis we get this uh, element and oh, got it. Okay, we should we should see, uh, do we have the closing pairs later? So we just maybe just keep, maybe we should keep in mind this uh, opening parenthesis. Mm -hmm. And again, we are just uh, opening it the next parenthesis. Uh, if they're closing- check, like, yeah. the last one, uh, if it's like closing, uh, yeah. matches like opening one. Yeah, and what will be the like, working with the last element in their um, any list, it will be like last uh, in first out, right? So if we are just working on with the next element, we will try to compare it with the last things which what we get before, right? So it will be mm -hmm. comparing the, this closing parenthesis with this one. And we can see that it's already incorrect and that we can immediately return false statement. But in this situation, it's different and we just um, see once their closing parenthesis and we can be sure that uh, the previous one is uh, like good for us and we can delete them and continue to work on with the next one. So if you can uh, see here, there are some uh, similarities by working on with the last elements all the time until we work on with the next one. So it will be stack structure. So uh, we can uh, add to our stack. Let's say that here it will be the queue as I said before. And in the stack, we will try to add all the uh, opening parentheses first, like in this example, like this one. And uh, uh, once we uh, met any uh, closing parentheses, we should do this checking processes. But until if we just met all the opening parentheses, we can continue to work on with all of them. And uh, if just uh, it's not empty in the end, we can also say uh, that it's not correct for us. It's not balanced, right? So uh, let's say that here it will work by this way if the parentheses will be uh, open and we can just check this out uh, like this one in the like type of this opening, right? So like this one, uh, maybe this one and the third character, it will be like this one. In this case, it means that we should just uh, keep track these characters and add to our stack, uh, as in like this one. And once we met any closing parentheses, we can do some changes and updates to our, uh, according to our stack. So it means that by this, I will add their elements to our stack. So it will be append and uh, it will be just this character, which is P, which is just this parentheses value in the string one by one. So once it open parenthesis, I will add it. It means that in else a statement, it will be just closing parenthesis and that we have to do something. Maybe we should just check this out. And by using the dictionary, we can be sure that what the exactly the next pair of this uh, closing parenthesis will be. So it means that we do have the current element, which will be P here, right? Which is closing parenthesis. Once we met it, we have to check the last element and try to compare it. If this, if, um, how we can um, uh, get this dictionary pairs. Oh, sorry for that. So it means that we can get that uh, opening pairs by getting the, as in the key value of closing parenthesis. Here's the closing parenthesis as in the key representation. And we can see if it's equal to their last element in our stack right? So it will be just lag a loss uh, stack. In the Python, we can just use minus one, which is the last element. If our stack is also not empty, maybe, maybe we check, we should check this out also. And it means that in that case, we can um, not to add the closing parenthesis. However, we don't need it anymore. And also we can add this one. However, it's already a good pair and we can avoid it and continue to try find the any unbalanced part of this parenthesis. So that's why we don't need it. And again, if the next character will be the, by this one, it means that we can immediately also delete the last element in the, our stack. But if it's just different one, as in like this closing parenthesis, it means that, oh, here we have some 
some cases which uh, makes our parenthesis unbalanced. So it means that in other cases, if they're not equal, not equal, we can return just false. So in that case, our iteration will stop and uh, we will just uh, continue to work on uh, with other, we, we won't uh, do any, any works with this um, traversing. In other cases, it means that in the else statement, we can just uh, pop their last element in the stack, which means that we will just delete these things in the case of correctness. So if our uh, pairs is good, we will delete the last element in the stack. Okay, let's say that if we do just have this, um, like this example, which is not, which is already unbalanced, right? It means that once we met the opening parenthesis, we all the time added to our stack and it's never ended and we won't come back to this line. We won't continue to work on with this line of code and it's never returned false, right? So in that case, once we uh, just left it with the not empty stack, we should also return false. If uh, we do have stack, we should return false. In other cases, just in other cases, it will be um, true by default. Line 15, you're going to throw an exception if the stack is empty. Yeah, right. So uh, I can say like, especially I can say like this one, but what if uh, we just don't have any, something, something like that. Let's say that if our characters uh, or um, example will already started with this character, it means that it's already false, right? So that's why we have to check this out if in the case, um, yeah, again, right. So uh, if we don't have any stack, it means that we cannot get the last element in the stack. So just avoiding their, um, um, yeah, so it should be like different, like or things. If we don't have any um, stack or if we, uh, if their last element not equal to their uh, previous things. So in this cases, it will be false. In other cases, we'll just um, avoid a good pair of parentheses and we'll continue to track all others in our example. So I think we should check this out, right? Mm -hmm. So for this example, it works fine. Um, do you want to give me a um, different uh, example? Or I, I think we can check these things. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I think we could return false in the beginning for the edge cases, like if the the number of characters in the string is odd, so we return it false because the the parentheses will always be in bounds. Yeah, it's a good it's a good point. Um, but um, yeah, so it's a good point. I agree with it, and uh, we can check this out. And also, we can check if there if we don't have any string, right? So if I think in the cases uh, they by the constraints they think that at least they have one character, so that's why we can check for the doing the uh, links for odding or. Um, evening, right? So it should be not if uh, it's just um, extra work. Um, however, if uh, their all the stack works fine, it should uh, just say that it, uh, it should work. So here, there, the, this problem can be continued by their um, additional statements by if we have some uh, strings and uh, you can balance it how you can solve this problem. So that's why we cannot base just one of these cases, but for the base solution will be something like that. So uh, their, their uh, similar problem for this one will be something like that, how you can balance it. It means that you also should keep track all of these things and add it to our result uh, string as in the result in, in the end, yeah, so. That's how stack actually works. And also um, 
the difference between the second Q will be just in this line. So, and in the name of their um, variable and in the Q, we can just do their pop left things. But for this, especially uh, for this problem, we should work on with the stack. However, we are just working with the last element. Okay. Do you want to continue to work on with the next problem? Or do you have any, any questions uh, about this um, um, problem? I think all good, we can continue and then get back to break breakout rooms and solve more problems. Yeah, Thank right. You. Sure. So um, the next things, it's just uh, all the pra little practices of this part will be about their uh, working with lists and working with string things. But the next big uh, also part of this um, traversing things, it will be um, BFS and DFS things. Let's say that we, uh, if we do have some graph here, how it will work for the working with Q. So uh, like overall you can, what's the BFS here? It's a breadth first search. It means that from the A, you'll uh, see all the neighbors first and then continue to work on with other neighbors of neighbors. And we also have their this data structure as an depth first search. It means that from the A, you'll go to the C, F uh, first uh, as by traversing it depths first and then continue to see other neighbors uh, of these uh, nodes. So um, how we can uh, implement it by using Q and stack here. Uh, as in the Q, we can uh, start from the, let's, tr let's try to find short paths from A to H node here. And uh, it means that we can continue to implement it iteratively. So here's the two words. Uh, you can uh, implement the BFS or the DFS by recursively and iteratively. And in the iterative implementation, we need Q and stack data structures. Um, by working on with this example, uh, we especially focus on focusing on, on the Q and BFS traversing. How it will work? Let's uh, say that our Q will work on with the first element as in the A, and we'll continue to try to get the breadth first, which, which means that they're like closest nodes as in like here's for the A, it will be B and C as in the neighbors. So we will traverse them first and C, and uh, also at the same time, try to compare it uh, to with the H, is it H or not? If it's H, we will Im immediately also stop traversing it and uh, return as in the result. And uh, uh, as in the breadth first search for the uh, traversing with this element, we will see the next neighbors of the, for the node as in C and B here. So how uh, exactly the Q works here all the time will work on with the first element in the list. So it will be in the beginning just A and that the neighbors of A will be C and B, but we'll delete their first element, right? And uh, by working, uh, by having their C and B in our list Q, we'll uh, again uh, reach the first element in the queue, which is C. And we'll try to find out the neighbors of the C, but we'll at the same time delete the C and adding their uh, neighbors of the C to the end of the queue. And it will be F and D here. And uh, the first, the next first element here will be B. We are trying to find out any neighbors of B, which will be here the H and F. So once we uh, met H, we can just, uh, um, we can just stop here doing some iterations and uh, returning that uh, way uh, or pass between H and B. So that's how uh, Q works here. Um, that's why we don't need any other nodes um, uh, if especially we're looking for some uh, node. So we can um, implement it by using this code. Uh, it also uh, works, as I said, iterative way of implementation. Again, we can um, import their Python library as in the queue. Um, in the JavaScript, it can be just simple um, array and you can add uh, in the end and uh, um, uh, 
work on with the first uh, element, uh, but here we can just create this queue as in again with the DQ functionality, add the first, let's say that if we do have the, that graph uh, and we have the first uh, uh, like starting point, which is A and the goal will be H node here. So we will add the starting node for, the, um, for our empty list of Q and later we will work on with this queue until it will be empty in the end. So in this in this uh, line of code, as in the nodes equals to the queue pop left, so you can see that we are just getting the first element in the queue. And here we can imagine that the queue is already empty, but we have to explore and we have to see other neighbors of this node, as in like B and C. So we're just getting the neighbors. Let's say that we can have access to the graph by the node value and we just get the neighbors of this node and we'll add it to our queue again. So uh, can you see like things when, you, when we at the same time deleting the first element and adding the next element to the end of the queue. So once also we will try to uh, check this out if it's equals to our goal node. If it's not, it will just avoid this line of code and it will continue to work on with this queue and again and again uh, until we'll uh, see the goal node. So that's how it implemented. In any uh, traversing problems, you can use this uh, template by implementing their uh, BFS uh, iteratively by using queue. So that's how it works. And uh, the next one uh, will be, sorry for that. The next is the same, pretty the same, but the difference between, again, uh, the difference between the order and traversing things. Depth first search uh, will go not uh, all the neighbors first. It will try to, as, uh, try to go as deep as possible from A to F first, like F node first, and then uh, we'll continue to work on this other element. And uh, for this um, data structure, we can implement it iteratively again with using stack. Uh, if you want to implement it recursively, uh, the stack will be uh, useless for us, but uh, in the case of um, iterative points, we can use it stack. So again, we'll start, uh, start to work on uh, with their uh, empty list as in the stack, we can add the starting point as an A and it will be the same, the short pass or any pass between A and H. So uh, let's say that we add their A to our stack and but uh, in the stack, if you remember, we will work on with the last element of the stack. It will be just one element in the stack. Um, and it's um, uh, easy to see that it's the last and first element at the same time, but we, we let's say that we're working, with, we're working on with the last element. And we're just uh, trying to add the neighbors of uh, B and C of A to the list first. And uh, then we will continue to work on what's the interesting things that we won't get the neighbors of B here as in the first element, we will get their uh, last element neighbors, which is C, and we'll continue to work on with their um, next nodes uh, on neighbors of the C. So it will be D and F. So that's why it will go deep first, and then uh, uh, we'll continue to traverse other nodes next. So if you can see here that there, by deleting the last element as in C, it will be uh, modified as in like B, F, D, which is uh, like their last element again here will be D and we'll try to find out any neighbors for the D, not for the B. So it will be G and uh, their the next neighbors of the G, it will be H. So here we can also stop um, traversing and then returning that we do have there some paths between A and H. So that's a true statement. Uh, yeah, so how we can implement it by the coding. So it's a, it's a code. The, the, the difference again will be here by working on, oh, so here I should modify it a little bit. Also, it's not leafa queue, but it's a DQ, the same as in the, um, as in the previous implementation. But here's this, the thing again, we will work on with the last element in the stack. It will be just popping the last element in the node. So it will be the, our current node. And for the current node, we will try to find out all the neighbors and we'll add it to end of the list as in the stack. 
So once we met their end note or goal, we can return this pass where it will be, uh, it will return the status as in, so sorry, we don't have any pass between these two nodes and it should end it up here. So here's the uh, one fixing thing should be not instead of leave a queue, it will be the queue. However, we are working on with this library as in the collection of um, the queue. Okay, so it's a depth first search implementation. Um, yeah, and um, again, as a, by trying to practice it, we can uh, first of all see uh, to this problem which uh, called as in walls and gate uh, is, uh, as you can see here, it's a pass between uh, uh, walls. And also we have to try to find the passes uh, and maybe a closest point to each um, for in each uh, e um, edge we edge or cell, we want to see how many, how long other uh, gates located. So here shows that at, uh, after three points, we can get any uh, gates here. So that's, that's a problem. Uh, and uh, this problem we can solve by implementing the BFS by using the queue. So that's, that's a practice point. Uh, should I continue to work on with this um, problem or uh, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, I think we can skip BFS and DFS because we are going to cover them in depth in one of our future sessions. Okay. But it's good to have it as a spoiler because this is an example where queues and stacks are used. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, in the case, we, I just can show there are several type of the problems, how we can solve uh, with the uh, like queue and stacks the, by traversing any graph matrices, um, any anything thing like that. So it will be uh, as in here, binary tree um, traversal. It also you can use some of the data structure what I mentioned before. So that's pretty it. Um, uh, here's also one more interesting question about it, that how we would you implement stack using queues? And the second thing is how you would implement queue using stacks. That's an interesting question. If you can imagine it, uh, let's say that you have several stacks, how you would implement the queue especially. So um, this, um, that's uh, like object oriented problems. You can meet it in the interviews or just good to know uh, to how to implement it uh, and try to think about it. Um, uh, overall, that's pretty it. So uh, we um, uh, knew uh, from this presentation, we knew about their uh, stack and queue uh, statements and uh, their uh, Python libraries in DQ, how to implement BFS and DFS. Later, you'll know it better uh, and uh, deeper about this. and. Um, yeah, so um, we can continue to work on, on the problems and try to practice it. That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> In the end, uh, yeah, well, here's the list of the problems. Thank you very much. Uh, so we are finished with the presentational side of things and now we can proceed to breakout rooms.